So today let's take a look at this Rectech Grills controller. So I do have a couple older videos on the Rectech Grill controllers. This is the first one that's a vertical mount. Most of them that you see is the horizontal mount. And I believe this is a much older controller. So all these have been the older style. But this one has a unique issue when it was being taken out to bring to me, the ribbon cable got destroyed. So just thought this might be an interesting video if we can possibly repair this ribbon cable. This is the type that doesn't like much heat, so I'm probably not going to solder on it, but it might be worth trying to repair because the board looks in really good condition. I'm going to clean the board up some as well, but I don't see much corrosion around the microcontroller or the RTD inputs. It's a little bit of dirt down here at the bottom at the terminals and around these tracks, these three tracks for our output for our for our fan, auger, and igniter, respectively, left to right. But everything looks really good on the board to be so old. It's in very good condition. Let's go ahead and take the board off and see if there's anything we can do about this ribbon cable. Yeah, it broke right there where it bends at. That's going to be tough. We're going to have to shorten that up just a tad, but we can't actually shorten it up a whole lot. I believe this nut should have been on the outside for the meat probe. We're going to look at this a little closer under the microscope. So part of this will delaminate and pull back like tape. And over this silver layer, there's some type of light green coating or tape. I don't know if it's anti-corrosive or just simply a protective barrier. So they put that conductive layer on the clear substrate and then put the coating over it and then like a layer of tape it looks like. But if we scrape down to the silver, we do see some conductivity. For example here, just on the green part of the trace with the tape pulled back, we get nothing. But if we scrape this off a little bit with the tip of our probe, if we get on the silver part, we do see a low ohms reading. So we do see low resistance here. So we might be able to repair this. We'll just cut it straight, cut it back, probably about a half inch, and that's probably all we're gonna be able to do. The problem is we're gonna still be really close to the bend. But we'll try to pull this back and separate it and just see how far back we can go. Being careful here not to let it peel or break the traces anymore. Let's be careful right here. And all that coming loose really well. We can take this part and fold it back. Going to clean it up good with some alcohol and get all the adhesive we can off and these are my really, really sharp probes and just being very, very gentle here. We'll speed some of this video up, but just being very gentle here and scraping through till we see silver and clean it off with some alcohol. And I believe we can do something with this. So back now I've cut them both pretty straight. I did take a soldering iron and put on the little piece that I cut and sure enough, even at 500 degrees, the plastic wanted to melt right away. So. I would have been limited on this one to using low melt solder. And of course, low melt solder is going to be very brittle. So I don't believe it would have held up here. So I'm just going to line this up and put some Kapton tape on the back to keep it lined up and straight and together. And I've decided to try this silver adhesive pen, this syringe of trace repair, like so. I show a link up here from Amazon where I got this from. Show you a little bit of the English instructions if you're interested in pausing and looking at any of that yourself. But it's fairly reasonable. It just doesn't come with a whole lot, 0.2 milliliters. But at the same time, it'll go bad on you very quick. I think the shelf life is pretty bad. And the ratings and reviews on this product is not great because I think a lot of people have got it. And it's not fresh and not usable. This is the second time I've used it, and it actually has not given me much trouble with that. But I know the shelf life is terrible on it, so you about got to order this whenever you need it. I had good luck in the past with a similar just single trace repair on an older Rectech controller that I damaged the trace on. 
but that was a straight trace and this one's gonna have a little bit of bend to it so there are other options out there like these here that's like an epoxy as well I haven't used them but they're similar and some of them are heat curable so you can keep that in mind as well but this comes with a little tiny syringe and to try the first one I'm gonna tape up the other traces to make sure I don't get any across as I'm testing this out and getting familiar with it and one thing I'll say there's no way to show this on video but it takes an extreme amount of pressure on this little syringe to get this product through this little tip and if you're not careful you will push the tip off of the syringe and that's what happened to me on the first one trying to learn so much pressure build up in the tip that it actually pushed it off and separated it from the syringe so here you see me grabbing the tip with my finger and I have to try to hold the tip on there as I put pressure. I believe this product would do a lot better, at least for this application, if that syringe was just a little bit bigger. It's really hard to push this product out of this tiny, tiny needle. But it does flow well and it does stick well. I do find that I have to come back with a small tool or I ended up using a toothpick. A toothpick probably works the best. And the first trace turned out pretty good. I'm just a little bit worried about that bend, covering that separation there in the in the trace. And here with the Kapton tape, I've got it where I can do two traces at once, because it does take this stuff a while to dry. And I'm coming back and putting it on these other two traces after 10 hours, and the top one still wasn't fully, fully cured. Probably best to wait over 24 hours, honestly. But you gotta press really hard, but I am getting better at it as I try to rest my hand and just keep it steady while I'm pushing really, really hard to expel the, the trace repair glue. I'm just gonna remove the tape. Instead of waiting on this to dry, I believe I can go ahead and do these two. I've gotten my confidence up trying these others with it taped up. I believe I'll be okay. That's going on pretty good, so. I really do like how this stuff does and it's almost like it's made specifically to repair this type of ribbon cable. I'm going to let this dry 24 hours and we'll come back and see what it looks like. So after 24 hours, it does look good, but I am worried about this cracking and separating here with any movement. Since this is right at the spot behind where it moves, I'm going to try to put some tape and stuff over it. but. I really think for longevity, instead of just taping over this, I really think I should put something over it and maybe do one more application. I'm gonna try some strands from some, some 14 gauge stranded wire. These are fine copper strands, and I've tested one, as you can see, at the top of the ribbon cable, and it seemed to work pretty well. So what I've done here is I just take the strand and put it across, try to get it bent to the right shape with the tweezers. And it does take some finesse, but we get it on there and I want to put another layer over it. That way if our ribbon cable does crack here at this joint, this copper wire should keep us functional. As well as give it more rigidity to hold up over time. I'm just kind of rolling it back and forth and making sure it's coated good. I've already done four, but here I'll just show you. One thing that helped was to just put a little dab on first and then stick the wire in. That way it adhered, you know, the surface tension actually held it um, a lot better. It holds that little strand of wire in place as you're trying to put the glue over it. The top one and the bottom one, you're fortunate enough that you can get a little messy with it and get it wider on purpose just to keep it stronger maybe. The three in the middle, not so much. You got to be careful they don't touch each other. But I could widen out the top and bottoms a little bit. Don't look as good, but it should be stronger. I'm gonna cut some 3M tape that I have and put it across here to hopefully keep this in place where it doesn't bend where they're joined. So this is totally cured and dried and I'm gonna stick this right across the middle like so. I'm going to press this down really, really well. And now I have to bend this and put it back through this little opening. 
and want to be very careful here not to damage it at all. But I do want to put some very thin double-sided tape back on here to make sure the membrane does stick back to the plate. So I got two pieces of double-sided tape for that as well. And there we go. I think that was pretty successful. I should have made that tape a little longer. I may just come back and put some over that ribbon. I don't want it to get caught on as it's being installed back on the grill. So I probably should have made that longer. That double-sided tape's going to have an unusual hump there, but I think that's going to be fine. We just have to have something better there for protection. So I feel like the tape was very necessary. Let's check it out here. That second one from the top doesn't go anywhere the way these traces are. We're definitely picking up down below the K ohm, so that should be good. That should up. That should be good. Down. Yep. Anytime you see it go below 1K, it should be fine on these. The microcontroller is just picking it up. I think these buttons are just hell low, so what a pull down resistor. So it doesn't take much for it to pick up as an input. I have cleaned this board up with some plastic safe contact cleaner that we've used many times on this channel like so. The board cleaned up very easily. I didn't scrub it. I just cleaned it off, used the Q-tip. I think it's ready to put back together and test. I'm gonna take this nut off the temp probe. It should have went like so. It may have been taken apart in the past. It was kind of pushing out and bulging when I got it, but we're gonna put it like this. We're gonna put our screws back in. Yeah, I think that looks good on the meat probe jack. Let's go ahead and connect our ribbon cable. And yeah, I wouldn't really want to make that much shorter. So we used about every bit of the length we could use on that. But that's not real bad. But yeah, I want to add some tape to that in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and do some testing first. I'm going to connect 120 volts up here to our supply. It shows hot and common here. It can be very dangerous working with mains voltage. So if you're not qualified to do so, then don't do it. Just gonna make sure these are taped up good. I have these where I can feed to multiple things. A lot of parts on this board is gonna be hot with the power applied. Take our quick test and close it, and we'll power it up. Yeah, version 1.02, this is a pretty old controller for sure. We do see that our lower button works, but it's probably fixing the error out. Yep, there we go, error three. So on these, error three is a probe failure or overheating, and we don't have a RTD connected, so I'm gonna bring over my little decade box. I pretty much bought this just for this type of thing, so you can actually see the little digits easy. I used to just simply hook a, a potentiometer up to these, but this will work out a lot better, especially on video. So this is our connections for the RTD. It says right here in between the terminals, RTD, resistance temperature device. I'm set for 1.6K. Now, as mentioned earlier, these terminals down here are going to be hot from the track outputs. So I'm going to keep my fingers away from here at all times. We do have our error three and it will not clear. I don't know at what version that changed. I know that most of these controllers, when you press the power button, it will clear the error. This one is not. So I don't know where the power button's working. So let's see if we cycle power, will it clear? with the RTD connected. And yes, it does. 313 degrees. All right, up and down is working in 25 degree increments, but I guess that's an older version thing as well. I like that. That's all working really well. The temp display toggle is working well. Let's go up to 1700, so 1.7K. And that should be about 358 degrees. So it should settle in somewhere there. Let's go to 1800, 1.8K. It does take a little while to settle in it's a software filter so it's averaging and every so often it updates and we can see how 
It takes a little while to settle in, but it's working well. And this paste or glue actually worked pretty well on this repair. It don't give you a lot of it, but it didn't take a lot. And the shelf life is not great on it, as mentioned anyway. But yeah, I got to be careful here where this moves. But hopefully with that wire added, it'll hold up for a while. I'm just going to let this sit here and see if those three dots I go away. And I'm assuming that's for warm up or preheat. And once it gets to temperature or temperature for a while it'll go away and so back now after a few minutes it did go away we're sitting there at 402 set point showing 375 at the moment i do want to go through the ranges on this rtd because that was the complaint about this controller one K is 35 degrees. So my working partner Jagger brought this in from a friend of his that just want to see if we could fix it and see what was going on with it with the RTD, but it ended up being a ribbon cable failure when it got to me. So after cleaning it up, we definitely want to make sure the RTD is doing well. And so far, no issue. That's all good. Um, I want to say either cleaning it up helped or he may have a actual RTD issue and wiring issue at the grill. So so 1.5K here, and we should be so around 263. So that looks good. So 2000 or 2K, I'll be right at 505. That looks good. On off button definitely works. It didn't clear the fault earlier, but evidently this older controller just doesn't because the button is definitely working. So I don't think it was any issue with the controller unless the cleaning helped. I believe it really is his RTD at the grill or maybe just a connection and it could have been some corrosion on the connection itself. We'll go ahead and power this off. And I have added that piece of tape that I talked about adding earlier. Just to make it where when it goes to get installed in the grill, hopefully that'll make it easier to put in without pushing right where I had it taped at. But I think that's going to work out just fine. If you found this video interesting or helpful today, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have a link in the video description for a lot of these items we use today to make this repair possible. Any of those links that you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.